Hello everyone and welcome back to Paleo 101 where we talk about fossils, minerals, and everything recorded in the Earth's rocks. Um, I hope everyone is, um, is staying safe from this whole coronavirus thing that is sweeping the nation right now. And I hope everyone is staying safe and staying sanitized and make sure that they're washing their hands and um, make, making sure that they, stand, that they stay sanitized. Um, on the beginning of March, I was able, before this whole coronavirus thing completely broke um, I was able to actually do some fossil hunting. Um, I went to, uh, to Tupelo, Mississippi to collect some Cretaceous fossils. And I went with uh, two couple of friends of mine who are fossil collectors and who are av um, avocational paleontologists like me. And I was able to go and go back to these sites in Mississippi. Um, the first site that we went to was the Demopolis Chalk Formation. That's a Cretaceous deposit that was deposited around 75, 76 million years ago during the Campania stage of the Lake Cretaceous. And so we went to two particular sites in Demopolis Chalk. The first site we went to, believe it or not, was a waste management site. Yes, you heard correct, a waste management site. And I collected at this site maybe two, two or three minutes last year, and I didn't and I didn't have enough time to collect. I only found maybe a few pieces of shells. And I found the uh, bottom half of, a, of, an, of an exogyra ponderosa. So we were able to ask for permission. And the cool thing about this was no one, the workers did not know that the Cretaceous fossils were there. They didn't know that they were actually built on an ancient seafloor that existed 75 to 76 million years ago. And so we went out with the workers and he said that he found an oyster bed. And so he led us to an actual oyster bed. Now when I say an oyster bed, I don't mean modern oysters. No, these were Cretaceous oysters. This was an ancient oyster bed that was left here as the seas that covered that part of Mississippi receded. And this is what North America looked like around 75 to around 76 million years ago during the Lake Cretaceous. North America was completely cut in half. Um, this is the Western Interior Seaway here, and this is, uh, this is the seaway that cut North America in two, and this is the uh, western part of North America, this is Laramidia, and this is the eastern part of North America, which is Appalachia, which is where we are, and which is where Mississippi is. So Mississippi would have been right around in this area, and it would have been completely covered by ocean water. Um, animals living in this animals living in this ocean were large fish like the Zabactinus, plesiosaurs, which were of course the, the predecessory to like the Loch Ness monster if you think of plesiosaurs, and large mosasaurs, large marine reptiles um, that existed, these giant monitor lizards, um, predecessors to monitor lizards that existed in those oceans. But the more common fossils that you'll particularly find in Demopolis chalk, even though that it's very famous for its mosasaur fossils, are giant shells of oysters. And these are just some of the fossils that we were able to find. So this is one oyster. This is the most common oyster that we actually found. This is Pycnodont. Um, this is an ancient oyster that lived in those ancient Cretaceous seas around 75 to 76 million years ago. These covered the entire ground. You couldn't step, you couldn't go a mile or you couldn't go just a few inches without stepping on these particular types of shells. Um, these are the most common fossil shells that you'll find in the Demopolis Chalk Formation where we were. Um, another oyster is known as uh, Agarastria palatica, and their shells are actually bits and pieces like this. But they actually go together like this, so you have a whole oyster like this. But they're, at, when these animals die, their shells disarticulate and become little pieces like this. But you put them together like this, it's an it's a entire oyster. But those are just some of the other fossils that we found. But the biggest fossil we found were bits and pieces of an, of an exogyra. And I posted a video of me digging out that particular large exogyra. And this is the fossil that I actually found uh, from that video. This is exogyra ponderosa. Um, there are two species of exogyra that we found in that location. There's exogyra ponderosa, which is the largest one that we found. And there's exogyra, um, exogyra costata, which is a little bit of a smaller specimen. Um, it has a different shell design and ornamentation on the shell. But it's a huge oyster. This would have lived on a substrate, maybe on a rock or something to um, protect itself with the water. And uh, this animal didn't move. Um, these animals did not move. They were solitary. These animals fed on, these were animals that fed in the benthic organisms like microorganisms. But this is a huge oyster shell. And imagine finding this at a place that is now um, a waste management site and you are finding giant oysters like this. Again, this is Exogyra ponderosa. This is the largest specimen that I have found on that trip. 
We also went to a, to a different site, but unfortunately that site is actually being built upon. Last time I went to that particular site, the second site that we went to, I found Squally Korax teeth, which is a, um, an ancient prehistoric shark. And unfortunately that site is being built on it. I believe it's becoming a mall. And that's the sad part about, you know, GL, that's the sad part about fossil collecting is that the great places that you did find fossils no longer are going to be collectible because they're going to be built on. Um, I believe that the particular site is actually going to be built on for a hotel or something like that. It's unfortunate because I did find my first vertebrate fossils there, which were Scully Corax teeth, and I did find a Pachyridazotus tooth, which is a large bony fish. But it's unfortunate, even though that we did find fossils, we found more oysters, we didn't find any other vertebrate fossils. I did collect some chalk samples as well, but I was mostly into trying to find vertebrate fossils, and unfortunately, I was not lucky to find any. Um, but I did find other uh, relics of the past, you know, and, and a uh, storyteller that tells us that we were once underwater, or Mississippi was once underwater um, during the late Cretaceous period. Another site that we went to was the Ripley Formation. This is a little bit younger than the Demopolis Chalk. Um, the Ripley Formation is about 70 to 71 million years old um, from the Maastrichtian stage, which is the last stage of the late Cretaceous period. And a lot of the oysters that we found were this oyster. This is Exogyra costata. You can see that the ornamentation is a little bit different. Um, these are two different species of Exogyra. And the ornamentation is a little bit different. It has these ribbing-like structures. And I found some pretty large specimens. This is a complete specimen. Um, unfortunately, this specimen isn't complete because it does not have the bottom valve, um, the, the right valve to it. This is the left valve. The top valve is the left, and the bottom valve is going to be the right. Um, it has the right valve still preserved on that specimen, so you can see the division between the left valve, which is the top valve, and the right valve, which is the bottom valve. Um, of these uh, oysters. Um, some oysters that we found were just the right, were just the um, the right and left valves um, disarticulated, falling apart. But there were some specimens like that Exogyra costata that I showed you, that is a complete specimen. Um, we also found different species of crabs, like we found the most common crab is uh, Dakota Cancer australis. That's the most common crab, but they weren't as well preserved because the specimens um, when we were out there, it was it was it had rained a day before, and so we were stuck in the mud a lot. And so a lot of the specimens that we did find were covered in mud, and our hands were covered in mud. So unfortunately, we weren't able to salvage a lot of the specimens that we really wanted, like the crabs. But we did find a couple of crab claws and a couple of crab legs and things like that. And we were able to find a lot of oyster shells and some snail shells called gastropods. Um, the specific name is Turritella. Um, those that's a Cretaceous. Um, gastropod that is very common in the Cretaceous and the in the rocks of the Ripley Formation. Um, and I, also, I had an amazing time being out there again, and I hope to do out do more collecting in that particular location because the fossils there are very unique. Um, they tell us a story that the, that the ocean um, was once here at one time because we're finding oyster shells and we're finding things like this. And um, it tells us that this particular area was once under a shallow sea. 76 to 75 million years ago. And uh, that's pretty much what I wanted to talk about. I wanted to talk about my trip to Mississippi and I hope everyone is doing well. And I will see you later with another video.